today I am going to talk about the issue of transparency. You know, most people online, they make it seem like, oh, sports cards, magic cards, Pokemon cards, everyone is just making so much very, so much money from investing. You know, you have people like sports card investor, uh, comeback kid investor, like magic MTG finance. The whole point is to take a hobby, which may not be structured in the way to make money and make money from the secondary market. So instead of enjoying the hobby, the emphasis is on making money and buying things that you may not love. You know, maybe you don't really love baseball, but that's what's making money. Maybe you don't know very much about F1 or soccer, but hey, that's the hot ticket right now. That's pretty crazy in my opinion and I think a lot of more people should be transparent as to how much they're making how much they're losing everyone it's kind of like going to a casino everyone has the good story about how much their max winning is at poker so I play poker a lot and I would be like oh I won this much in poker I won that much but then you kind of forget like oh for every time that you win you broke even one time and probably lost 200 times. And it's tough, you know, there's a rake and whatever, right? So now I'm just going to tell you how much money I've lost and where I've lost it. Uh, in the live stream, I was very honest. Uh, I lost a lot of money buying reserve list cards. And the reserve list is down 50% buy list. So I was buying underground C for 750 and now it's free 80 on buy list and now it's you know it's hard to sell when you pay double the price for a asset just maybe 120 days ago. <clears throat> uh, sealed boxes even though they haven't really gone down all that much the volume I had a whole <clears throat> YouTube thing about volume and how much you could actually move on TCG Play or eBay, and that's a big problem. When you buy a large sealed collection, your biggest problem isn't, oh, hey, my collection went down. You have a way larger problem. The way larger problem is one person a month buys this box among every single person on TCG Player. So for every 10,000 stores trying to sell this one old vintage box, you get maybe one sale. <clears throat> so, and I lost a lot of money opening Pokemon cards. I opened probably close to, I would have to guess 5,000 packs, 10,000 packs during the big Pokemon boom. I'm still eating my own inventory, if you will. Uh, and it's fun and a little disappointing. I opened another 500 packs today, one day, and didn't really get any of the hits I was looking for. It was kind of disappointing, but that's how opening packs does. So one of the biggest ways I've lost money is I open packs and it's fun, but it's very addicting. And in the, I actually timed it in two minutes, I can open 10 packs. So in a day, I can easily clear a thousand packs uh, if I don't have like other stuff like my dogs to take care of or something like that. So that's how I've lost a lot of money. I've lost a lot of money from investing. I've lost a lot of money from opening packs. I think this is something that people just don't tell you. Uh, it is fun opening packs. I really do enjoy it. It's, but it's also very expensive. It's no cheaper than going to a casino. It's exactly the same in my mind. Uh, yes, you do get a piece of paper, but you know, a casino gives you a piece of paper too. It prints out the winnings that you have, or you know, the break even, or whatever it is, right? You got a piece of paper that you can turn in for money. I think everyone has lost money now. Now, I, I know some smart people in the comments with no YouTube channel, no names, no you know anonymous people, they've made tons of money from the down market. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I, a lawyer, unless you have evidence, I'm not gonna believe what you say because why would I? My understanding is the entire market is down. It doesn't matter if you invest ARK Invest, God forbid you put your money in FTX or Lunar Coin. There are a lot of ways to go to zero <laughs> right now. There are more ways to go to zero than ever before. Crypto being one of them, right? Like 20 years ago, crypto didn't exist. It's impossible to lose money on crypto because there was nothing, there's no exchange, there's no Celsius bank, there was no Lunar Coin uh, investment firm like Voyager, Free Arrows Capital, whatever. There's none of that. So even if you were the dumbest person, you couldn't invest in it. 
it didn't exist. There are so many ways to lose money now. And the idea that cards, I, I think at some point in time, cards were an investment, but they're no longer. An investment, even a long-term investment, needs to show that it can actually go up in price. Uh, if it's vintage baseball, if it's actually unique, rare items that people cherish, and it, it has some type of rarity that's not manipulated by Panini or Wizards of the Coast or you know even Pokemon, those items will go up because people will want them still. I think the vast majority of items printed today and 20 years from now, people are not going to want those magic cards. They're not going to want those Pokemon cards. They're not going to want because it's not the oldest. It's kind of in this kind of weird situation where modern cards are printed so much. Seven trillion Pokemon cards in a year. That's that's like, you know, that's insane. Magic cards are printed so many times. We have the uh, draft, then we have a set, then we have a collector. It's crazy. Like it's not just crazy in like terms of like, it's crazy in the volume they print. It's just also the quantities and the foil etched. You got a regular card, you have a regular card, you have the foil card, you have the etched card, you have the gilded card, you have the borderless, you have the alternative art. It's the same card. And now like when you Google it or when you put on Card Kingdom, like eight different cards pop up for it. This is not sustainable for many reasons, but the main reason is we don't have, inf the player base right now does not have infinite money to spend on infinite cards. That's the problem. The problem is simply supply and demand. There is no demand and there is very high supply. Therefore, if you do the price chart, the price will go down. I think we have another year of a recession, maybe more. I know the CPI number is slightly better than expected, but doesn't feel that way. And really it's a feeling. It's not the actual bank run. It's the idea of you getting in line for the bank run. So in everything that we have, it's the same thing with reprint. The reprint doesn't actually happen until next year or, but as soon as I tell you, Hey, we're going to reprint a black Lotus for real, the price will drop. Um, because it is the knowledge of something coming that drops the price. It's, you know, it's very sensical. The market will adapt to all news. And if there's news of an event in the future, it will take that in consideration for the current price. Like, for instance, if that baseball player, I forget what his name, I think maybe Tatis. He's probably, you know, given what, how they treated people who got busted for steroids for Hall of Fames and their, the cards are very bonds compared to know, a Derek Jeter rookie card. I mean, yeah, it's our A-Rod compared to Derek Jeter. Same time, same team, Yankees, very popular. And you look at their price difference, it's a lot. So maybe those Tatis rookie cards that were such a great investment back when Sox and T was like selling 20 of them, you know, for a Charizard, no longer looks that great because we know we have history. The, the price currently is, more, it's almost like the Super Bowl winner. If we expect Tom Brady to win, then his card will go up before he even wins. Because it's the, the card, the price of him winning is put into the card already before he wins. And this is why things have gone to shit. Because at the end of the day, it's really, in my mind, a very simple graph. It is supply. There's a lot of supply. Nobody can, there's more supply than there have ever been in the history of cards for every card game. Uh, and there's even more card games than they've ever been, you know, that are bigger. And then there's also the demand. Demand is less than ever because of the recession. It's really that simple. Bye, guys.